Hello folks, Peter Lawn here. Welcome to my tutorial series on how to get set up to use Blender to build bases in No Man's Sky. This is a part one of a series of videos that will explain the software needed and the workflow process to get your awesome ideas and creations into the No Man's Sky game and impress the hell out of your friends. This tutorial is aimed at PC users only. Uh, very sorry my console friends, this is a process that's not available yet for PS4 or Xbox. Uh, there's basically four pieces of software you will need to get started. Number one is the No Man's Sky game, obviously, and you probably already have this if you're watching this tutorial. Number two is the Blender software, which is the free 3D graphics program, which is you know which will allow us to manipulate our base objects in the 3D workspace. Uh, number three is the No Man's Sky base builder plugin for Blender by Charlie Banks. This cool plugin uh, helps us visualize and manipulate the No Man's Sky objects within Blender. It manages the import and export of base information into Blender and allows us to insert base parts into our design and perform things like snap parts together, manage our wiring, and even apply colors to the objects. Number four is the No Man's Sky Save Game Editor by Goat Fungus. This utility is a very powerful enhancement tool for the No Man's Sky, uh, but we are only using a small piece of its structure, the JSON editor, to facilitate the import export of our No Man's Sky base information into and out of the Blender 3D workspace. We'll get into the details of setup and working with these four programs in a bit, but I wanted to first show a high level overview of the workflow so you get an idea how the programs interface with each other. The No Man's Sky game allows you to create up to five save game profiles. Each of these can be set up as either creative, normal, survival, or permadeath levels of play. Each save game profile can accommodate up to two save game files. One is called an autosave, which gets updated when you jump out of your ship or upload your base at the base computer. The other is called manual save, which gets updated when you save at the save point or a save beacon in the game. Either way, a save file is updated, and it's this file that we load into the No Man's Sky save game editor. <clears throat> Once the save game has been loaded into the editor, you can then use the raw JSON file editor in the drop down menu to open the complete information of the save game in the editor. There's a lot of information in this editor, but we're only working with the section that holds the information about the base we want to edit in Blender. Once we find our base information, we use standard Windows copy or selection and copy commands to move the base information into the Windows clipboard. We then use the import command of the No Man's Sky plugin in Blender to populate the 3D workspace with our base. Now that you have your base in Blender, we can manipulate objects to our heart's content, moving, rotating, uh, resizing objects. Uh, this is where all the creativity happens to get the base looking awesome. Let's follow the workflow flow to get the base modifications back into the game once we're finished in Blender. We use the export from the Blender uh, no, no Man's Sky plugin to copy all the base info and shove it back into the Windows clipboard. We then make sure we have the right base info selected in the No Man's Sky save game editor and use the standard Windows select all and paste commands to paste the base information currently in the clipboard to the JSON editor. Save the game in No Man's Sky Save Editor and simply reload your save game to No Man's Sky to behold your creation in the game. So now that we have the general gist of the workflow, let's look at each of the software utilities in more detail and I'll help with the download, setup, and configuration to get you up and running. No Man's Sky Save Game Editor. This is a free downloadable standalone program that you can download off GitHub at this address. When you hit this page, scroll down to see more details and the requirements of the program. It does need Java, so make sure your machine has the latest version. Under the installation section, click on the latest version link to download the file. Once downloaded, you will see a self-extracting executable file load at the bottom of your browser. Click on it and you, will get a, you may get a warning from Windows Defender or your virus software that there's a danger in opening this file, but bypass this and you'll be prompted for an installation location where you can it basically can be anywhere on your computer. Once all the files are installed and extracted, find the install location with Windows Explorer, 
locate and click on the NMS save editor dot bat file uh, to highlight it. This is the batch file that starts the program. Now hold control and the shift keys together while you left mouse click and drag this file to your desktop, which will create a shortcut to the program for quick access. Let's double click the shortcut we just created to launch the save game editor and have a look at it. Because it's a batch file, you'll see a black command line window open in the background while the program loads. Also, the first time you run this batch file, have some patience because in the background it's searching for your No Man's Sky save location and also doing some initialization and setup. You'll know it was successful and ready to use when you see the window to select one of the save game profiles in No Man's Sky. The other thing to watch out for is Java errors that may occur while you're using the program in the background command line window. If you see this, just shut down the program and restart it. When we get to this point where you can launch the save game editor and select and load one of the five save game slots, we know we've installed and set it up correctly. So let's look at Blender and the No Man's Sky plugin. Uh, the Blender installation is pretty straightforward and I won't show it here, but just go to blender.org and download and install the program. To download the No Man's Sky plugin for Blender, we again go to GitHub at the address shown uh, to get to the main page of Charlie Banks Utility. There's good information regarding overview of the program, requirements, and some great how-to video links, which I highly recommend you watch. Go to the Installation Steps section and click on the Latest Releases link. This will get you to uh, a page showing the current and past releases with the latest at the top. Click on the Latest Release link header and when the page loads, scroll down to the Assets section and click on No Man's Sky Base Builder .zip file link. Once downloaded, you will see a zip file load at the bottom of your browser. Click and drag this file to the desktop so we know where to find it later. Let's open Blender now and install the plugin we just downloaded. You'll get the splash screen at first and it should default to a standard 3D workspace layout tab as you see at the top. I'm going to provide more in-depth discussion on navigation, views, object manipulation, etc. in part two of this series, but for now we'll focus on getting all the software installed and set up. To get the No Man's Sky plugin installed, we go to the menu item, Edit, Preferences, and on the left side of the Blender Preferences window, click on Add-ons. Now click on the Install button and let's find that No Man's Sky Base Builder.zip file we dropped onto the desktop. And once selected, click Install Add-on button. We now see the add-on installed and to activate it we need to click the little checkbox shown here. You can now close your preferences window. Now at first you probably don't see anything happen and you wonder well how come this thing didn't install. And most likely what you will need to do is access the context toggle by hitting the N key or clicking this tiny tiny little arrow here up in the right hand side of the 3D view window. It's not a very intuitive uh, thing to do, but uh, that's how you uh, reveal the uh, No Man's Sky uh, plugin tab along the right hand side, which you can click and, nav and activate the plugin interface. Don't worry, we're going to talk all about the cool features of this plugin in the next video in this series, but for now we're going to get this whole interface set up so you, you are No Man's Sky Blender ready. There's a few housekeeping things you want to do in Blender to get a workspace ready for No Man's Sky base editing and one of them is to get rid of the default cube, light, and camera that shows up in the startup file whenever you load Blender. With your cursor in the main 3D view window, hit A to select all objects in the scene. Hit the delete key that will get rid of these items we won't use. You can also get rid of the animation window along the bottom of the workspace. We won't be using this feature and uh, you can do this by clicking and dragging down on this little handle at the very edge of the animation window to make it disappear. Finally, once we have the No Man's Sky plugin selected and all the windows sized the way we want, you can save this default layout um, in Blender by clicking the menu item file, defaults, save startup file. 
So now whenever we start Blender or start a new file with Control N, the workspace, workspace will be exactly the way we like it. So that's it for now for this video. Um, thanks for watching and stay tuned for part two uh, where we're going to jump into importing a base and working with the software tools we set up in this session.